Welcome CSC 121 to Turtle Instances. And there's instructions here under Unit 5 that you could click on. It's a PDF, so you could click on and open that up. And the reason I'm opening that up, not just to see the instructions, but there is a little picture of the finished product here in case you need on that PDF. And also, here's the finished product. I'm going to run it. And you can see what happens. It just creates a row of six instances of turtles and then it duplicates those rows. So it's, it's using operations we already know how to do. It's just something that's a little bit different is we're going to use a for loop to actually create the instances to make six instances first and then we'll kind of duplicate that. So, so every time a turtle is created it's just putting the instance on the stage or on the on the, the window screen that we're looking at here. So it's just a little bit different. There's other ways to do it. But this is one way that I thought was pretty interesting, the fact that you can generate multiple instances with a for loop and just give it an i dot whatever name. Actually, there's just one function, and it's just going to be the display turtle. And it's basically just going to make the turtle kind of, kind of go there. And now, remember, we, don't, we didn't instantiate it yet, so we're, we're going to actually instantiate it uh, in a for loop. So we're going to do that in a for loop. And one thing that changed a little from my instructions, in my instructions I used random colors because that was easier and we had done that before and that was pretty simple to do. And, but what I really wanted to do is actually cycle through a list of colors by going red, green, blue, aqua, violet, orange, six colors and cycle through and repeat them each time and make sure that each time it created an instance it actually used a color from that list. So I did that with a little bit of a counter here and kind of incremented the index position number in here so that wasn't that hard to do so there's not a lot of code here so this should be pretty simple so that's why I'm doing this one first you can use the random color but if you don't then you won't need this so so I'm gonna start here and actually I'll just copy this and oh I have a new one started here so I'll just paste this in here whether I use random or not I could even comment that out if I'm not planning to use it these X and Y's can be set up globally because they're not going to be inside a function and they're going to just be added to each time so we're going to start just doing that globally and what we'll do is we'll just kind of create a function here and we just called it display turtle and a couple things here even as I look at the other one and I can even copy this to make this faster um, just to explain what I'm doing so you don't have to watch me type it we're gonna hide the turtle first so you don't see the turtle in the middle and then moving over to there because that's where he's gonna start the turtles gonna start at 0 0 and then go here to negative 100 negative 100 so instead of doing that we're gonna use the high turtle method first and we're also gonna make sure he's a shape of turtle we're gonna put the speed up so it goes fast and we're gonna put his pen up so you don't see a trail going behind him and then he's just gonna go to a certain spot we're gonna send one turtle here and we're going to turn them left 90 degrees which faces him up because normally they're facing this way so we're going to turn them around and face him this way and then when that happens then we're going to show turtle which kind of undoes this hide turtle so then we're going to show the turtle so that's really the first part and then our our for loop is really going to just instantiate a turtle and do that six times and then run that display turtle function so that's all we're going to do here so Maybe I'll just, you don't need to watch me type things. I'll just copy this and put this over here. And high turtle, shape turtle. Now if we go to run this right now, you're not going to see anything happen because we didn't instantiate them. So we're not really getting an error here, but we, we didn't actually create a turtle yet. We used kind of this, this argument here of T, but we, we have to make an instance of a turtle from our turtle module from the turtle class. So that's what we're going to have to do next. So if you just wanted to actually check out your turtle, you could do that first. And I'm going to get rid of this, but you could, you could just, just, um, you know, do something like you know Tim dot turtle or Tim equals Tim equals because that's how we instantiate Tim equals turtle dot turtle. You know, you could do that. And remember, I'm going to get rid of this. So I don't have them set up right now with any kind of shape or anything like that. So if I just gave him a shape here real quick, I'll just borrow this just to see him do something. And I'll just say Tim dot shape turtle. Now if I run it, I should see my turtle here. So that's what he's going to look like initially. Again, what we're going to do by running this function is he's going to turn left 90 degrees. That's this part. 
and we're going to color them and he's also going to move down here. So that's what we're going to do next. So we don't we don't even need this part because we're going to have the T-shaped turtle up here. But just to see where we're starting here, just so you can see where the turtle typically starts, I'll get rid of that. And what I'll do here, I'm not even going to give him a name of Tim, but let me just start my for loop. I'll say for I in range, and we're going to make a row of, set of six. So I'm going to put six here and put him in there. Instead of, instead of Tim, we're going to call him I. So I is basically going to be, we're going to have tur turtle instances all with the name of I when we do that. So if we did that, I don't know what would happen right now. I don't think anything would happen just yet because we're not running any kind of function or anything. But, uh, and we don't have any shape or anything. So we're not really seeing anything yet. But if we go right after here and put the function in here and put the display turtle, I'll call it in here. I'll put I in there because that's actually the instance name that the turtle's getting here from this loop because we're kind of generating six instances and then now we're gonna run the function with those instance names. So let me just see what happens here. And there's my turtle and it's only going one time and they're all in the same place. If they make six of them, they're all gonna be right on top of each other. We have our, our, our speed at zero. That's why you're not seeing it, but they're all kind of on top of each other right now. But what's ha not happening here, it's not making a row of them yet because it's putting them all on top of each other. So we need to make them move over a little bit. So every time at the end of this loop, what we'll do is we'll update, we'll go X plus equals, I think we went 50, I think we're gonna go 50 over. So we'll kind of go 50 pixels or units, however they measure them over. So let's just try this and see what happens. And that's kind of what we want. There's our, our row of six. So that's the first part, we have our first row here. And if we actually wanna give them different colors, and I'll copy this. I'll copy my color list here. So I'll put in a color list, I'll separate that. What I wanted to do is actually give the turtle a color each time of red, green, blue. And it's important that we have six in the list and six that we're running here. And what we could do here is just go, I'm just gonna, I just did a thing C for color and I put C equals zero in here to start off the loop. I think it might be outside the loop. I, I think it's gonna have to be outside of here. So let me let me cut this and put it outside of here because we don't we don't want it reset it because if we did that it would be resetting. So we want that outside of the loop. We don't want it resetting each time. But what we do want it to do is give turtle a color. So we could do this before here. We're gonna say I dot turtle because that's how we're, we're gonna refer to our turtle. I'll do my variable here and I'll say color equals and then it'll be color list C after that this is run after it runs each time we actually want to kind of update update the number so we could do C plus or equals one if I got that right so what should happen here is we're basically saying the color is going to be the index number from the color list and it's going to start at zero so the first one will be red okay if I comment this out just to show you what I'm talking about here if I comment this out and I run it they should be all red and I have an error. Turtle object has no attribute turtle on line 22. Color, that's because uh, I is the turtle and color is the attribute and color is the color that he's gonna get. So I'll do this back and that's, that's what would happen because what's happening here, he's taking the color, I is the instance name, the color is the attribute and he's taking the color, which is actually C, which is actually zero. And remember that it's, the, it's this index position in color list. So we're just saying it's equivalent to the first index position. But if we update the index position each time by saying C plus equals one, or, the, or basically C equals C plus one, what should happen, it should run through that list and do zero, one, two, three, four, five. It should do that. So that's what we want. That's what that little thing does. And that that's, wasn't that hard to do. I, I was at first avoiding it and just doing the random color, but that was pretty easy to do by just using the index position that's in here. Keep in mind, if it goes out of range, you're gonna get an error. So that may be happen, happening once we actually create our, our uh, extra rows here. So we have one row. So that's, that's, the first, that's the first part. The second part's gonna be pretty easy uh, after this, because we're just gonna basically, and we did this before in other exercises, we're just gonna repeat this row uh, going up 50 each time. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna put another for loop we're gonna do a for loop inside a for loop. Now, when you need to indent all these, you can highlight these and hit tab. That'll indent all them. If you need to move them back for whatever reason, you know, you decide you're not gonna have something. If you do shift tab, that'll move them back. So tab to move them over uh, is helpful. Also, if you ever wanted to comment a whole bunch of lines, if you highlight these and you use either your control key or your right click, you should have this come up 
where you could go to the uh, command palette and they have something called add line comment which will comment all those lines all at once because that would take you'd have to do that six times and then also to go back to the command palette if you do remove there's remove line comment and that'll just take them away so that's helpful too when you need to comment out blocks of code so anyway now we have our four what we're gonna do is repeat this six times and what we're gonna do each time and we're gonna have to actually move this in here and I'll, I'll show what happened I'll leave it there first but remember the other one we're, what we're gonna do is, is after we do this we're gonna update we, we have to update because we're starting over here because it's finishing up over here whatever it started negative 100 and then plus 50 plus 50 plus six times you know whatever that is over here wherever this ends up over here that's where it's gonna start again that's why for this loop, when you start moving it up, this is the loop that creates the rows, rows going up, and it's a change in Y, so it's gonna be moving up. So whenever this goes up, whenever we're gonna make a second one, what we have to do first is say X equals negative 100. We actually wanna reset it so that it starts the next one at X equals a negative 100. And then we can increment the Y after the inner for loop runs six times, because it's gonna be in line with this one. So. I'm going to type this, I'm just going to put it here, and we'll just say y plus equals 50. So we're just going to add 50 to it. As we do this, we're just going to set everything. It's not going to change the y, because the y is going to stay at negative 100. But then after it runs through one loop, then it's going to update and make a second loop and make a third and a fourth. So we don't have to reset it just yet. Because if we set it here, it would move everything up, because this is the first thing it does. First thing it'll do when it goes through the loop here, it's okay, first row, set your X to negative 100. It'll make sure it does that. And it actually, it, we don't need that there, but after it goes through this, when it comes back again, this resets it. So this kind of resets it for each row. That's what kind of this does, resets X for each row. So that's kind of the, the purpose of this. And this adds, you know, that makes it go up. It adds 50 to the Y, so it makes it go up in that direction. So that's what that should do. So let's try this out. There's one row and we don't have another row yet. So it's not going up. Let's see what our problem is. We have an error. Tuple index out of range on line 23, and this is what I was talking about. Because we're incrementing this C, when it gets to, after it goes through one time, it already goes up to the last version, and now it's gonna keep adding, and it's trying to give it a color of six, and there's no six. This is zero, one, two, three, four, five. If six is out of range, that's what that means. It means it's out of range, there's no six. So to fix that, if we just cut this and put it in here as almost kind of, in a sense, kind of locally within the for loop, that means each time it runs a row, it'll reset it to zero. So it'll reset these six kind of index positions. So, so after it goes through and does zero through five, red through orange, and then it, it's gonna reset, and then the next row is gonna be red through orange, and so on. So. So that'll make it reset so each row is the same. So just by moving that in, that should eliminate our error and it should actually work. So let's run it. And that looks good. And if you saw, there's a little blinking arrow there, which I think it had something to do with, we're giving it a color ahead of time. So I think it had to do with this thing. So I'm gonna cut this out of here and put this here. I think that was the, that was the issue. So let me just try that and see if that goes away. I'll run it one more time. Yeah, and there's no blinking. There's no blinking classic turtle in there. So I think by giving it a color ahead of time, making sure it gets the color afterwards, instead of giving it a color before we even told it to move or do anything yet, it, because now we instantiate it, and then it's running through all this display turtle stuff. So it's hiding it, it's doing all this, it's making shape a turtle, and then it's getting its color. It's getting its color after it's already in place. So then we don't have that little blinking thing that's that we see kind of momentarily that we saw before. So, so that's really it. That's EX15 turtle instances, nothing really, really that difficult here. Just, again, just creating one turtle here, making them go into position and kind of hiding them so we don't see any lines or anything or moving around or anything like that. And then we're just running a loop that creates six instances and then is actually creating six more rows by just updating the Y each time and resetting the X so that it always starts a row here. Otherwise, you're gonna have rows that keep, you know, going horizontally and keep going out there. So that's why that's built into this for loop here. But just remember that these are in this for loop and this one is also in the first for loop. And then all the things that are changing just really for the row, for each individual row are changing in here. So these things are for the row. The things changing here are for each row.
if that makes any sense, hopefully. So this stuff all is just for one row. This stuff is all for the six rows that we, that we generate. So, so that's EX15 Turtle Instances. You could share your link and just put it in under Unit 5 for that exercise. If you are my lady.